The reason for the difference between the public understanding and the academic understanding of Darwinian evolution is simply not the fact that there is always a difference between the public understanding and the academic understanding in a scientific theory. It's not simply as simple as that. With Darwinism, there is a concerted dawah, not dawah, well, you can call it dawah, an evangelical propaganda campaign to actually confuse the masses. Now, although I don't like to use the terms macro and micro evolution, for the purposes of this video, I will actually use those terms to illustrate a point. Now, online and offline, there is a point that's being made by Darwinists. Micro evolution, which is small scale evolutionary changes, like the peppered moth example, is the same as macro evolution, a monad to a man, right? Now, this idea that micro and macro is the same thing is something that no Darwinist online and offline can say we don't use as an argument. They do actually use this as an argument. In fact, if you were to watch any of their videos, this is going to come up again and again. What's the evidence that natural selection can lead to this major biological uh, structure, this, this novel problem that we're facing? How do we know that natural selection did this? Well, we have these small-scale evolutionary changes, and these small-scale evolutionary changes over a long period of time can, of course, do this. So micro is equal to macro. It's just the same thing. Now this, of course, as I've been pointing out, is a fallacy of equivocation. It's not the same thing. However, they do not like to admit that. They like to continuously repeat the same narrative, just keep parroting the same narrative. Macro is micro, micro is micro. Now what I'd like to do is this. I would like to use one of the founders of the modern synthesis, Theodosius Dobzhansky. I hope I said his name right. Now, Nobody can claim he's not a Darwinian academic because he believes in Darwinian evolution. He's one of the founders. In fact, if you're to read up the history of Darwinism, it's impossible that you will not come across this man because he is extremely important. One of the most influential biologists in the last hundred years. And this is what he says about micro and macro evolution. For this reason, we are compelled at the present level of knowledge, reluctantly, to put a sign of equality between the mechanisms of macro and micro evolution. And proceeding on this assumption, to push our investigations as far ahead as this working hypothesis will admit. So clearly, macro and micro evolution for Theodosius Dobzhansky is not the same thing. He realizes you can't just go from, okay, we've got these small scale evolutionary changes, therefore this large scale evolutionary structure or whatever it is can actually take place. The weird thing is that this isn't something which is very hard to actually uncover when you go into the academic literature. So for example, we have the problem of the origin of uh, animal body plants. Now this particular problem, if anybody is to look at microevolution and look at this particular problem, they would realize that this is something which evolutionary academics have spoken about. This is a clear issue. So why is it that still we equate or we hear that micro is the same as macro? And the reason is simple. The vast majority of people will never go through the academic literature. The vast majority of people only know surface level knowledge and in fact, when somebody is listening to a lecture and they see an authority, they see someone big like Richard Dawkins, Jerry Coyne, Aaron Ra, or you know, PZ Myers or whoever, and they're speaking with passion, and we've worked it out, and this is the solution, and we know what we're doing, then the average person, the average atheist, the average agnostic, they're just gonna be like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, these guys know what they're talking about. What, does, what do these religious people know anyway? And what I find strange is these are the same people who say we should be skeptical, we should question, we should, you know, we should be free thinkers, we should challenge everything, we should rebel against religious authority. Fair enough. Why don't you apply that to Darwinism? Why do you just accept it like sheep? Whatever they say, you just accept like sheep. In fact, you know, you see a lot of these refutation videos online, debunked, this person debunked, this religious person debunked. I am yet to see a Darwinist being debunked 
by one of these atheist popularizers. Just debunk one of their poor arguments. Say, this is what's happening. Why does a Muslim have to do it? Clearly, you're cherry picking who you want to debunk and who you don't, don't want to debunk. So in fact, you're part of the Darwinian machine of propaganda. And you being a part of it means that you are propagating an idea that is false and that you, in fact, have doubts about. There are atheists out there, and I have spoken to people who were atheists who then became Muslim, and they said, even as atheists, they doubted the actual theory. But what I'd really like to push for now is for there to be honesty. Just admit, look, I'm an atheist, and I doubt, and I have doubts about Darwin's theory. Don't hold on to these beliefs, these primitive you know, Genesis story of Darwinism, of atheism, that, you know, all of these things happened and this led to this and this. Just because you've seen a documentary and read, you know, a few lines of Richard Dawkins' book, you, even if you just did that, you would realize something's off. And I know many atheists do actually believe this, and that's maybe perhaps why on this channel, I, I love reading the comments, right? Atheists get so angry. And I'm thinking, why are you getting so angry? All I'm doing is I'm quoting sources that you accept and I'm quoting uh, them not out of context. I'm not quote mining. If I'm quote mining, then fair enough. Bring it up. Explain how I'm quote mining. But don't get emotional about it. Because when you get emotional about it, people like me, they look at that and they think, hmm, there's something going on. They're having doubts. Are they having doubts about Darwin's theory? Because if they start to have doubts about Darwin's theory, then they're going to have to have doubts about their atheism, and then there may be a fear, oh wait, what if I die and I find out that hellfire is real, and that God is real, and all my life I've actually been deluded. So they do actually have this fear, and this is why I think they get very emotional. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to your comments.